Hi guys, Mr. Zigner here. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 7, 1% of a number. All right, so the three things we'll be looking at are, of course, finding the percent of a number, using percents greater than 100%, and we'll take a look at a real world example to wrap things up. Here we go. Well, here we go. Our main idea, of course, is to find the percent of a number. Now, when we do that, we're going to either change that percent to a decimal or, or you could turn it into a reduced fraction. So a decimal or a simplified fraction. That's what we want to turn our percent into. Of, of course, we've talked about this before. The word of means to multiply. So once we turn that percent into a decimal or a fraction, we're going to multiply it by, well, the number that they give us. All right, let's look at some examples so we can see what we're talking about. Here we are. Find 72% of 350. All right, so here we go. The two choices are 72% could be one of two things. As a decimal, it'd be 0.72. As a fraction, well, that would be 72 over 100. Percents are out of 100. So we don't have to deal with such a big number here, though. We could simplify this. How about we cut both of those numbers in half? Let's see, that would be 36 over 50. Now, well, they're both still even, so let's cut them in half again. That would be 18 over 25. All right, finally, we have a simplified fraction. So now it's up to us. Do we want to use this 0.72 or the 18 over 25? I think I'm going to go with the 0.72. So here we go. We're going to take that 0.72. I said before, of means to multiply. So we're going to multiply that by, well, there's a 350. So that's all it is. Pretty straightforward, right? Let me bring up a calculator, and we'll take care of that right now. So we have 0 0.72 times 350. And that equals 252. So there we are. Our answer is B. Okay, let's move on. Now we're finding 225% of 50. Now the interesting thing here is that our percent this time is more than 100%. So well, let's figure out what that would turn into. We have two choices again. 225% as a decimal. Do you remember how to do this? When we turn a percent into a decimal, you move that decimal two places to the left. So that would become 2.25. Now as a fraction, that would be 225 over 100. Well, then you could simplify that. Let's see if, oh, if we divide that by, let's try 25. If we divide that by 25, well, 100 divided by 25 is 4. And 225 divided by 4, let's see, that'd be 4, 8, 9. There we go. So we have two choices again. 2.25 is the decimal version, and 9 fourths is the fraction. You can use either one. It doesn't really matter. I think I'll, I, I, I like using the decimals, so I'm going to stick with the decimals. So my new problem is 2.25 times, because of means to multiply, times 50. So here we go, 2.25 times 50. Let's get that calculator back up. So we have 2.25 times 50. And there it is, 112.5. Yep, there we go, 112.5. All right, let's move on to our next one word problem now. Sleep. 
The average person sleeps 33% of their adult life. If their adult life is 62 years, how many years does the average person spend sleeping? Okay, so it's 33% of, there's our of, 62. 33% of 62. Let's stick with that decimal thing. To make a percent into a decimal, again, we move that decimal two places to the left. So that would be 0.33. Of, again, means times. And then we have our 62. Let's bring up that calculator one more time. So 0.33 times 62. 20.46. And oh, yep, there it is. D is our answer. Kind of scribbled that, didn't I? There we go. It's a little bit better. And that really is it. All you need to remember, folks, let me go back to that one slide, is that to set up one of these problems, just remember the percent could be written as a decimal or could be written as a fraction. Once you have it in one of those forms, remember that of means to multiply, and then you just multiply your decimal or fraction times whatever number they give you. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Check out the questions at the bottom of this video on my website, and we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me as we work our way through the 7th Grade Math Connects textbook. Feel free to email me with any questions. My website is www.mattzigner.com. On my site, you'll find links to my math blog, some of my favorite educational sites, and lots of helpful information for students, parents, and teachers. See you next time.